Hey Tankers and welcome back to World of Tanks with PR154 where we are launching our first video of the Back to Basics series. This is aimed at uh, looking at low tier tanks, the, the formative tiers of, of World of Tanks. This is where players join the game, these are the first tanks they see, these are the tanks that they learn on. So we're just trying to make that learning curve a little bit softer and, and cover some of the basic gameplay principles of some of these vehicles. Uh, the, the list tractor is the tier one vehicle of all of the German tech trees. If you want to go up a German tech tree, this is where you start. Um, as with all tier one tanks, you have no equipment slots available to you. You have no consumable slots available to you. You have no directive slots available to you. Um, however, you will start out with a crew that has uh, reached 100% of its basic qualification, which uh, avoids some of the less pleasant aspects of the uh, of, of the crew grind. Tier 1 vehicles are typically quite underpowered. Uh, their view range is also quite limited as well. You can improve your crew skills to, uh, to improve that view range, but uh, that's that sort of effort is probably best expended at, at other tiers rather than down at tier one. Uh, armor is not so much a consideration uh, when you have tier one vehicles fighting tier one vehicles. Uh, even with the list tractor, it's, uh, it mounts basically a, a 20 millimeter machine gun. Uh, and we're not all that hung up about um, about armor values and armor penetration, just, just because uh, pretty much everything down at this tier was, was really just designed to keep out rifle bullets rather than um, uh, rather than anti-tank weapons rifle bullets and shrapnel really uh, none of which we we really have here um, list tractor mounts a, uh, a 20 millimeter machine gun uh, as we discussed it um, and of the uh, of the tanks that 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 mount these sort of auto cannons uh, list tractor has the highest damage per minute and you'll, you'll see why, just in a moment here, uh, we are lining up, allowing our aim circle to dial in, and we're just unleashing a fierce magazine onto that uh, Tier 1 Russian vehicle, the MS-1. Um, we've just caused 130 hit points of damage on it. That's uh, accounted for over half of its hit points. So two, two long bursts like that will basically send uh, an enemy vehicle back to the garage. Uh, now the uh, the penetration value of this is 30 millimeters. Um, so you can sort of see that mounting over the shell. You can see our average damage 11 hit points per shot. Average penetration 30 millimeters. And that's something that will need to be borne in mind once you start fighting tier two vehicles. And you will get matched up against tier two vehicles uh, in this in this tank. So there are certainly situations where you might need to use your premium shells in order to uh, in order to get penetration. Now, why wouldn't we use just use premium shells all the time if they penetrate better? Well, the fact is they they actually cost more, like a lot more, like four or five times more per shot than the uh, than the standard rounds. So, um, I, I certainly wouldn't wouldn't recommend tier one as being as being the the, the battleground for uh, for dumping all your credits um, but that facility is there if you need it uh, noting some of the french tanks that you're going to find at tier two will uh will will have sort of 40 millimeters of armor and you won't be able to penetrate it with the standard stuff uh, some of them even quite have quite durable sides like 40 millimeter armor plate on the sides and you'll need to uh uh, either find your way behind them or switch to the premium shells in order to engage them. But fortunately here we are we're completely across a, a playing field of tier ones so we have not had to uh, reach for that two key. Thus far we've had quite a significant impact on the battle uh, knocking out two enemy vehicles for over 600 hit points of damage inflicted. It is worth noting however that um, most of the opponents, both on our team and the enemy team, are driven by AI. Um, and as such, they, they tend to um, not play quite as well as a human player um, most of the time. They also have a tendency to play a little bit aggressively. Um, so what you could see that, that we did 
on this particular line was we could wait for the enemy to try to come around first. We had uh, friendly tanks in behind us, um, and as one tank poked around, that uh, was uh, our vehicle as well as uh, as well as that of the team that were able to to gun some of those tanks down and give us a real numerical advantage on that flank. Uh, as you can see, we're just raking the side of the uh, of the FT. Very few shots actually failing to penetrate. Um, I guess owing to, to hitting the back end of the vehicle, but certainly uh, certainly giving ourselves um, a, a second or two for the aim circle to dial in. This uh, this aim circle that you see here, the, uh, the the yellow circle bouncing around, that's representative of how far your shells will disperse. So. Um, so you'll notice that as we're moving around, that aim circle is growing and shrinking, uh, but there is still a there is still a residual dispersion um, uh, within that that circle. So we've allowed it to dial in all the way before we loose this burst at, at the FT that's hiding in the bush, and we're able to knock it out. So this all looks pretty good for us at, at this point in time. We. Uh, We've cleared everything out of the south. We've um, uh, and there's only two of them left. However, in very quick succession, they've actually just knocked out two of our friendly vehicles. Um, so with those with those two tanks that are left, if we were to try to drive back to base to catch them, uh, we would end up losing the game because they could they could quite easily land on our cap circle and cap us out. So. We're going to start the cap clock first, and we're joined here by the uh, uh, by the MS1 that uh, that is actually a human player, uh, so making some very uh, sensible and human decisions there. Um, so capturing bases is uh, is a great way to earn victory, particularly if you are um, uh, if, if you're pushed for time, or in the event that. Uh, maybe the enemy outnumbers you and you, you have the ability to land on cap and uh, and basically let the timer uh, run out. So uh, we managed to uh, managed to win that one. Um, certainly could have been a different result if we'd uh, uh, if we'd allowed the enemy to start capping our base. Let's just take a quick look at those results. So what we've done here, we've picked up a level one mastery badge, which is indicative that our experience score was in the top 95% uh, of players uh, in, in the vehicle for the last month. Um, so pretty happy with that result. We've picked up a few badges of merit here as well. We've got the Bruiser Medal for causing damage to enemy vehicle modules or crew members at least five times in the course of the battle. We picked up the Fighter Medal for accounting for at least four to five enemy vehicles in one battle. Um, and we picked up the Fire for Effect Medal for causing damage to the enemy team that it was equal to at least the hit points of our vehicle. So we had, uh, if memory serves, about 260 hit points uh, on this vehicle and we've been able to inflict nearly a thousand hit points of damage on the enemy team. Having a look at the team scores, uh, we, we did place quite well by, by experience points um, uh, and followed up by an, a number of these bot tanks that were uh, uh, fighting and defending their corners particularly well. Uh, of course, special mention to the, uh, the Fiat 3000 on the enemy team who uh, uh, had the highest damage count at their end as well. Having a look at the uh, detailed report, this is where we really start to see some of the elements of the game economy kicking in. Um, now, while we'd won, uh, we'd, we'd picked up 84,000 credits for our part in the battle. Bearing in, mi bear in mind, we that was also our first victory for the day. Um, so thanks to uh, uh, premium missions, among other things, we'd, uh, we'd had a bit of a, uh, a credit payout because of that. Uh, our clan was also running credit boosters at the time, which had also contributed to the results. So uh, in actual fact, we probably came in uh, closer to around 15,000 credits once you take these two things out, out of the consider out of consideration. Now, most people playing the uh, the tier one list tractor will probably be on a standard account, so uh, they won't be making anywhere near as many credits. Um, in which case, this would have been closer to a ten thousand credit battle. But uh, fortunately, the, uh, the the tier one vehicles have a, a very cheap ammunition. Um, very low repair cost. So that all helps and, and you can start to pick up credits and assist 
your subsequent grinds. So that's it for the Leash Tractor. I hope you enjoyed this replay. I hope it uh, helps your game as you uh, take your first steps through the German tech tree. Uh, please also check out the Wix article to which this is attached where we cover um, a number of the, the different German tech trees that, that are going to spread out from the Leash Tractor and uh, you can see where this tank will take you. In the meantime, take care out there.